Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let me thank the uh, chairpersons for introducing me. And in the next uh, 20 to 25 minutes, I'm going to talk to you about a glimpse into the future with SGL2 inhibitors. And although it says glimpse, I would probably look into the deep into the uh, SGL2 inhibitors in future of diabetes. I have no conflict of interest on this topic, but uh, we have been one center for the uh, uh, phase three trials of the cardiovascular outcome trials of SGL2 inhibitors, which is a multi-center world over study. <clears throat> uh, in this presentation, I'm going to go through the SGLT2 inhibitor types and their mechanism of actions, and then efficacy of uh, SGL2 inhibitors. Then few words about uh, non-glycemic benefits of SGL2 inhibitors, safety, and finally, to compare with uh, the current medications, uh, what will uh, be the future of SGL2 inhibitors if we get some long-term uh, outcome benefits. All of you know that uh, how the SGL2 inhibitors act on the uh, kidneys, but uh, it's usual there are two types of uh, receptors in the, uh, in the proximal conventral tubule, which is SGLT2 and SGLT1. And it is important to understand that SGLT2 uh, is the main uh, receptor in the proximal conventral tubule, which, which reabsorb 90% of the glucose that you excreted into the nephron and 10% is reabsorbed from the SGL21 receptor. Therefore, the finally, uh, you will uh, virtually get no glucose in, in uh, urine because of this reabsorption. When you uh, consider into the mechanism into, the, into this SGL2 in, two inhibitors, we know it's a co-transporter. Glucose is co-transported with sodium. And uh, so sodium potassium ATP is also involved in this uh, co-transport and uh, these particular uh, receptors are involved. So what will happen that when the SGLT2 is inhibited, what will happen that glucose is uh, uh, excreted in urine as well as sodium is excreted in urine. So these two are very important in terms of outcome of the SGLT2 inhibitors. Now it is uh, important thing to compare and see what are the SGLT1 and SGLT2 because in future you are going to get uh, SGL2 1 and 2 combinations to uh, practice already has come. So the, the, the SGL2 is in the S1 segment of the proximal conventral tubule and S2 and S3 in the uh, SGL2 1 inhibitor. Important thing to understand is 90% of glucose is reabsorbed in the, in the um, uh, SGL2 uh, uh, receptor, only 10% is reabsorbed from the one receptor. An important other feature is that SGLT2 is mainly in the nephron and SGLT1 is in other, uh, other organs as well, like in the intestine. Therefore, when you block it, you will get some side effects of gastrointestinal system. <clears throat> so when you look at uh, SGLT2 uh, types and main outcome trials, uh, the empaglifosine is available in Sri Lanka at the moment, registered, canaglifosine also registered and dapaglifosine also registered in Sri Lanka. And the main outcome trials of EMPA is EMPA outcome trial, and then there is EMPA kidney trial is going on, and then there are two other trials going on for EMPA glyphosine. Then canaglifosine canvas is the main trial, and the credence trial is the kidney trial of uh, canaglifosine, which is also published. And then dapaglifosine is the declared to me 58, is the main cardiovascular outcome trial. And DEPA-CKD is a kidney trial for the DEPA-glyphosine. And there are some two other, other glyphosines available, but for the interest of the time and, the, and my topic, I'm going to confine into the, into the main three glyphosines in terms of their outcomes. Now, it is important to understand that uh, the three major trials of uh, SGL2-2 uh, SGL2 inhibitors the empaglifosine study, if you look at the study population, is 100% of the patients had established uh, heart disease. This is the important thing to understand. They have 100% uh, established atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. If you look at CANVA study for the canaglifosine, uh, the 35% the of 65% of the patients were having established cardiovascular disease. So uh, the, actually the empaglifosine uh, study had a 100%. 
Then if you look at uh, dapaglifosin study, it has about uh, uh, 40 to 50 percent of patients were having established cardiovascular disease. Reason for identifying the, uh, the, uh, the cardiovascular disease here is that when you have established cardiovascular disease, you can look at the outcome in a very short time because the events can happen very early on these patients. Therefore, sometimes when you have more patients with, without having a cardiovascular disease, they will not show the benefit the way that we expect from the study. Now, if you look at the efficacy of SGL2 inhibitors, that uh, the, the mainly what will happen is that glycosuria happens, and therefore there is a decreased glycemia, decreased glucose toxicity, and the improvement of the insulin secretion happens. At the same time, because of the glycosuria and the ketogenesis of uh, SGL2 inhibitors, decreased body weight and the improvement in the insulin resistance. I will go into more pathophysiology with time to come, and, but this is the thing that we need to remember. Ladies and gentlemen, it is important to compare the three main uh, SGL2 inhibitors in terms of their efficacy. If you look at their efficacy, like you will see that slightly better canaglifosin, but there's no significant difference in the efficacy between uh, Impacana and the DAPA when you look at it. But what is important for us to understand is that their, their HbA1c reduction is like 0.1, 0.5 to 1%. So their moderate reduction in HbA1c in their action. Therefore, it is important for us to understand. Next uh, few slides, I'm going to go through the non-glycemic benefits of SGL2 inhibitors, especially the cardiovascular outcomes of SGL2 inhibitors, renoprotective effects of uh, SGL2 inhibitors, the weight loss, blood pressure, and some bo uh, metabolic bone diseases, which are uh, uh, sometimes may not be the uh, good for these SGL2 inhibitors. So ladies and gentlemen, when the SGL2-2 inhibitors gave the cardiovascular benefits, people thought, well, what is the reason for giving these uh, cardiovascular outcomes? But all this is uh, evidence-based. What, uh, what is important to understand is because of the sodium, because of the increased uh, natriuresis and the reduced preload, there is a reduced myocardial wall tension and arrhythmia causing reduced risk of heart failure. That is the basis of uh, SGL2 inhibitors in reducing heart failure. And at the same time, there's antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, and anti-apoptotic properties of SGL2 inhibitors, which reduces the cardiovascular risk. And there's improvement in the glycemia and insulin resistance without hypoglycemia by SGL2 inhibitors. Because you all know that hypoglycemia itself will increase the cardiovascular risk. Therefore, there is no hypoglycemia here. Therefore, you get a cardiovascular outcome benefit. At the same time, reduce weight, especially the weight reduction is 70% from the fat and the visceral fat and the epicardial fat, therefore there is a beneficial for the heart. And at the same time, there's increased glucagon levels resulting in an improvement of myocardial cell function. And also increased ketogenesis. When you are on a SGL2 inhibitor, you are like in a fasting state all the time. Therefore the ketogenesis happens, that increases the hematocrit and leading to an improvement in the myocardial oxygenation. At the same time, there's a decreased blood pressure, arterial stiffness, as well as uh, restoration of the, uh, the BP, causing uh, decreased preload to the heart. And also, increased activation of uh, AT2 receptor, as well as angiotensin 1 to 7 pathways, leading to vasodilatation, causing uh, benefits of cardiac outcome. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, the SGL2 inhibitors are, are very well can give rise to cardiovascular benefits because of all these features of SGL2 inhibitors. There are new uh, novel pathways have been also looked into the outcome benefits of SGL2 inhibitors. With that, this is one of the most recent uh, publication on Lancet in 2019 with a meta-analysis of all the SGL2 inhibitors. Now, when you look at meta-analysis of SGL2 inhibitors in composite of myocardial infarction, stroke, and cardiovascular death, that is major, major adverse cardiovascular events, actually categorized into the established cardiovascular disease versus multiple cardiovascular risk factors. This is the most important thing to understand. When the patients have established cardiovascular disease, the SGL2 inhibitors are significantly reduced in the cardiovascular death than myocardial infarction and the stroke. But when the patients have multiple cardiovascular risk without having established cardiovascular disease, their, their reduction of the cardiovascular death, stroke, and myocardial infarction is not significant. 
Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, the more important thing to understand is that if you have a patient with an established cardiovascular disease, SGL2 inhibitors are going to uh, benefit their cardiovascular reaction of cardiovascular death, stroke, and the myocardial infarction. But when you have multiple cardiovascular risk factors, that effect has not been seen. So when you look at the same meta-analysis, SGL2 inhibitors in hospitalization for heart failure and cardiovascular death due to heart failure, again, you will understand that if the patient had established cardiovascular disease, all these three medications have shown a significant outcome benefit with, uh, with hospitalization of heart failure and cardiovascular death. But when you look at the, look at the uh, patients who have multiple risk factors shown some benefit towards the benefit, but that's may not that significant. But probably we need the long-term studies in terms of uh, looking at the multiple risk factors and the SGL2 inhibitors uh, to see the effect of SGL2 inhibitors in time to come. Therefore, for the moment, with the short duration of studies, what we have seen is that the cardiovascular death and the heart failure risk is the tremendous to reduce or significantly reduce with SGL2 inhibitors when the patient has got established cardiovascular disease. Now, uh, if the patient uh, has got uh, uh, the, the next meta-analysis, hosp uh, the hospitalization for heart failure and cardiovascular death, again showing benefit, uh, extremely benefit with established cardiovascular disease versus there is a benefit with uh, patients who are having risk factors for cardiovascular disease, but not, not that significant. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, SGL2 inhibitors, uh, up to now, they've shown all the evidence that if you have a patient got established cardiovascular disease, there is a reduction of cardiovascular death, reduction of heart failure, reduction of hospitalization for heart failure, and reduction of stroke and myocardial infarction. Just one or two slides to compare with the GLP-1 analogs, which is important because that is another player in the same level which we need to understand. The semaglutide is, uh, this study is a SUSTIN-6 study, uh, which, uh, which is a subcutaneous uh, daily uh, semaglutide study, which has shown, which is a GLP-1 analog here, which has shown that if you look at the major adverse cardiovascular events, there's a significant benefit of GLP-1 analog here. But when you look at, uh, when you look at uh, other things like myocardial infarction and uh, non-fatal strokes and even cardiovascular deaths due to the cardiovascular deaths have not shown significant improvement with uh, semaglutide in the SUSTIN-6 study. But there is a definite benefit on major adverse cardiovascular events, which is significantly reduced with, uh, with uh, semaglutide in the SUSTIN-6. So when you compare those two, slight benefit towards SGL2 inhibitors. It is important to uh, see whether what's happening to the oral semaglutide, which is going to be uh, available in Sri Lanka in, in time to come which is the Pioneer 6 study, which has shown tremendous outcome benefits. And if you look at here, there is a benefit in the primary outcome with the major adverse cardiovascular uh, events. And when you go into the cardiovascular deaths, there is much more benefit than the SGL2 inhibitors in Pioneer 6 study with the oral semaglutide. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, when you compare SGL2 inhibitors and GLP-1 analogs, so SGL2 inhibitors are slightly more better in, in, in terms of cardiovascular disease, but oral semaglutide has shown almost closer to the SGL2 inhibitors. So with that, I'm going into the renal outcomes of SGL2 inhibitors. Now, when you look at the renal outcomes, there are so many mechanisms that the SGL2 inhibitors can give rise to renal benefits. First one is that reduced glucose toxicity in the proximal convoluted tubule uh, causes renal protection. And then serum uric acid levels goes down in, uh, in, uh, in SGL2 inhibitors, which will also benefit in renal outcomes. They reduce blood pressure, arterial stiffness, and sodium sensitivity. Then reduce oxidants, uh, oxidative stress, and then reduce intrarenal angiotensin upregulation also causes benefit. Then there's a renal hypoxia by increased erythropoietin as well as reduce obesity, inflammation, fibrosis, intravascular volume reduction, all causes reduction of the protection of the kidney. At the same time, increased sodium supply to the macula densa, which can give rise to vasoconstriction of the afferent arterioles, which can give rise to decreased intraglomerular pressure, is one main, uh, main, stay, main way of renal protection in the HGL2 inhibitors. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, the renal protection of SGL2 inhibitors has been very well uh, understood, and the pathophysiology of uh, that has been all, also very well understood. 
going into the meta-analysis of uh, different uh, SGL2 inhibitors in terms of worsening renal function in stage renal disease and the renal death. Important, all these three studies have shown that if the, if the patient has established cardiovascular disease still shows significant benefit in reducing the renal death, reducing the uh, worsening of the GFR and, and, and reducing the stage of end stage renal disease. And there, there, when the GFR is less than 60, still that is significant. And when the GFR is 60 to 90, significant is more, they get more benefit. And EGFR is more than 90, the renal protection is more. What it says is that if you start early SGL2 inhibitors, the benefit in terms of renal protection is more in patients with the renal disease. But even if you start at the stage of less than 60 of GFR, still the benefit is significant in, in terms of protecting the kidney disease. I think it's important for us to understand that point. Now at this stage, I'm going to, going to take the canaglifosine study, which is a study, because it is really look at the renal outcomes and this particular study, the important thing is that the 60% of the patient of this study, the GFR was between 30 to, 30 to 60. So earlier studies, GFR is more than 45. Now here, 60% of the patients within the GFR of 30 to 60 and shown tremendous reduction of end-stage renal disease, doubling of creatinine and the renal death when you compare with placebo. Therefore, the canaglifosine renal study, which is credence, has shown significant benefit in terms of, cardi uh, terms of reduction of the kidney disease. Therefore, SGL2 inhibitors, without no doubt, will have benefit in, uh, in, cardi uh, in renal disease. But now, there are two or three studies going on for CKD, and probably we have, at the moment, we have data up to about 30 uh, GFR, but less than 30 probably we'll have to see in future. With that renal protection of uh, renal protection of SGL2 inhibitors, we probably need to compare with the with the GLP-1 analog, which is a leader trial with liraglutide, and we will understand that the results of leader trial showed there is a 26 percent of reduction of albuminuria and new onset uh, 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 microalbuminuria, but there is no benefit on terms of EGFR reduction. Therefore, SGL2 inhibitors have shown reduction of microalbumin, macroalbumin, as well as protection of the GFR worsening, where the uh, leader study has shown there is no effect on the EGFR reduction, but reduction of micro to macroalbuminuria. So it's important to understand. And if you look at the uh, SUSTAIN-6 with the semaglutide again, the same results had been seen in SUSTAIN-6. Therefore, when you look at the renal protection of uh, GLP-1 versus SGL-2 inhibitors, both uh, medications reduce the micro, macroalbuminuria into the uh, 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 in-stage renal disease, but probably uh, for the moment, the available data suggests that SGL-2 inhibitors will further reduce uh, further act action on the GFR, worsening GFR, as well as in-stage renal disease and the renal death. The, the semaglutide uh, sustain 6 also shown the same result. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going into the blood pressure uh, effects of SGL2 inhibitors. We know that natriuresis and then the decrease uh, body weight, decrease sympathetic and RAS activity, and decrease insulin resistance and improving the arterial stif stiffness all cause benefits in blood pressure reduction in SGL2 inhibitors. Now, when you look at the meta-analysis of uh, comparing the um, uh, systolic and uh, diastolic blood pressure among, among the uh, SGL2 inhibitors, you will understand there is a moderate reduction of systolic as well as diastolic blood, pressures, blood pressure in SGL2 inhibitors. Therefore, SGL2 inhibitors have beneficial be effect in terms of reducing the blood pressure in all these three medications. What about weight loss, ladies and gentlemen? The loss of calorie due to gly glycosuria is one, uh, one uh, 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 pathogenesis for this. Then volume depletion from the natriuresis and the osmotic diuresis and the increased fatty acid oxidation for energy supply. And because of the ketogenesis developing in SGL2 two inhibitors, the patients will get weight loss. So weight loss is also well uh, identified the reasons for weight loss in the SGL2 two inhibitors. When you look at the meta-analysis of weight loss uh, among the types of HGL2 inhibitors, you will understand there is about two to three kilograms of weight loss in almost all the types of uh, HGL2 inhibitors which I have shown to you previously. When you compare with sulfonylureas, which causes weight gain, when you call, uh, compare with uh, DPP-4 inhibitors with weight, uh, there's no weight gain, 
and, and metformin has shown there is very, very slight weight uh, uh, reduction. Therefore, in terms of weight reduction, SGL2 inhibitors have shown benefit over many other medications. At the same time, it is important to understand rapid weight loss of one kilo within seven days and modest weight loss with uh, two to three kilograms over six months had been seen in SGL2 inhibitors in terms of weight reduction. I have shown you this graph to show that all the weight loss studies with uh, SGL2 inhibitors uh, uh, up to date. Ladies and gentlemen, at this point of time, I would like to just compare GLP-1 with uh, SGL-2 inhibitors in terms of, because they are in the same players in the, in the current guidelines, but uh, if you look at the uh, hospital admissions for heart failure, there is no major benefit of uh, GLP-1 analogs, but cardiovascular deaths, some of some other studies have shown benefits, some are not. And if you look at three-point maze, almost all the GLP-1 analogs have shown outcome benefit. Uh, and uh, the weight loss is also almost all have shown outcome benefit. But in terms of cardiovascular death, hospital admis uh, uh, admissions for heart failure and heart failure deaths, GLP-1 analogs probably have probably has shown not shown that kind of benefit. But SGL2 inhibitors shown heart failure hospitalization benefit, cardiovascular uh, outcome deaths, myocardial infarction, three point mass, stroke, and weight. So in terms, when you compare with these two players which are fighting for the second level, or probably future is the first level of management, probably has, probably a, uh, you need to think about where, where, where should be the HGL2 two inhibitors, where should be the GLP-1 analogs. Ladies and gentlemen, I have talked to you about safety of HGL2 two inhibitors and showing you more and more data to suggest that HGL2 two inhibitors should be a you know, better option in future. But you know that there is increased UTI, increased genital ulcerations. Euglacemic ketoacidosis, although it's rare, if you miss it, you are going to have a mortality without knowing the cause of this mortality. Because if you look at the Oxford data recently sub submitted that many, many patients who have died with uh, diabetes, unidentified cause, when they later look into it, it was euglacemic ketoacidosis. Then small increase in LDL, acute kidney injury when you start immediately when you, uh, when you start SGL2 inhibitors, and some metabolic bone disease and amputation. But this has been disproven from the credence study. There is no uh, bad benefits of the bone in SGL2 inhibitors. Therefore, we need to understand there are some, uh, some, uh, some concerns as well for the SGL2 inhibitors. With that, ladies and gentlemen, I gave you enough and more evidence from, it, from uh, the GSGL2 inhibitors and, and GLP-1 analogs. Currently, metformin is the first option for almost all the guidelines. Then the second option is either GLP-1 analogs or SGL2 inhibitors if the patient has got established cardiovascular disease or patient has established kidney disease. This, that, that's where we stand at the moment. So my question is, is it, is, it, is it fair to say that metformin should be the first option still? Or, 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 or is it, say, is it, uh, is it uh, what is going to be in future? So we'll compare metformin and SGL2 inhibitors. And if the long-term safety, I do understand that we don't have enough and more data to say that SGL2 inhibitors are safe. But weight reduction, much more with SGL2 inhibitors. Cardiovascular safety, much more with SGL2 inhibitors. Renal protection, not with metformin, but with SGL2 inhibitors. Blood pressure reduction, only with SGL2 inhibitors. Hypoglycemia with, with both, probably. So ladies and gentlemen, with this cardiovascular safety, people are talking about more and more about cardiovascular safety and metformin. I'll just show you one slide from UKPDS original slide, which was published in way back in 2008. Uh, uh, it shows that metformin arm of the UKPDS has shown that any diabetes-related endpoints, diabetes-related death, death from any cause, and myocardial infarction, significant reduction with when you used metformin. But you need to understand, now we are in a different era where, the, where this UKPDS is not that relevant for our practice. But still, we we'll look at some other, other data as well. So improved ca cardiovascular outcomes with metformin in type 2 diabetes, a plethora of evidence. All these studies have shown here, has shown that some kind of outcome benefit with metformin in terms of cardiovascular disease. Just to show you the REACH registry, which was published in 2010, uh, suggests that all cause mortality when you compare with metformin and, uh, and other medications, there's a significant reduction in all cause mortality uh, when you use metformin uh, as the outcome, outcome. Therefore, when you look at these particular studies which has published 
either uh, 2010 or before, you may see that cardiovascular disease reduction is much more better. But it's important to understand, we look at a meta-analysis of metformin to see whether what is what is about exactly. This is the diabetology uh, which was uh, published in uh, 2017, very recently, looking at the meta-analysis of metformin in almost all the studies together. Unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, if you look at the metformin and cardiovascular death, there is no major benefit with metformin. Although we had seen this benefit in previous studies when UK VDS was done, the, the, the era was quite different. And if you look at the metformin and all-cause mortality in, the, in this particular meta-analysis, there is no benefit in terms of outcomes. Therefore, when you look at SGL2 inhibitors and metformin at the moment, we look at two different kind of medications. It is time to see the number needed to treat. Then simvastatin study, we all know, number needed to treat, prevent that one death is 30, ramipril 56 to prevent one death, and empaglifosine 25 to prevent one death, and almost all the glyphosines are somewhere around this. And I was unable, I, I could calculate the uh, uh, number needed to, uh, to prevent one death in metformin using the UK PDS, uh, uh, study, but it's unfair when the meta-analysis says there is no benefit uh, in terms of outcome. Therefore, at the moment, what we can say is there may be that uh, metformin has some outcome benefits in uh, previous studies, but unfortunately, meta-analysis has not shown that. However, the metformin has long-term safety studies, which, not, which uh, for last 50 years, and if you look at this particular study, cancer risk and mortality in metformin meta-analysis published, and overall cancer incidence was reduced by about 30% in patients who are on a long-term metformin. Therefore, metformin has long-term outcome benefit, long-term uh, safety benefits for more than 50 years, but when, when you compare with other medications. So I'm coming back to my previous slide. The long-term safety, there is no argument that the metformin has the best long-term outcome benefit and with SGL2 inhibitors, but weight, cardiovascular safety, renal protection, blood pressure reduction, all with SGL2 inhibitors, and there is no argument that SGL2 inhibitors are superior to metformin. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, I was trying to compare, I have, I have compared the GLP-1 analogs previously with SGL2 inhibitors, because they are having the, they are the partners who are competing for the second, uh, second uh, range of uh, treatment in the, almost all the, all the, all the uh, uh, guidelines, but it's important to understand we compare metformin with SGL2 inhibitors. I'm going not to compare metformin with the GLP-1 analogs here because this is not the topic for me to do that. And when you compare, then you will understand uh, what, is, what will happen in future, whether, whether we should consider better outcomes. So metformin and cardiovascular, if you look at the cardiovascular deaths, metformin in the meta-analysis had not shown cardiovascular death outcomes, but SGL2 inhibitors have clearly seen outcome benefit. If you look at all course mortality, some studies metformin have shown, but meta-analysis have not shown the benefit, but SGL2 inhibitors across the board has seen benefit in reducing the all course mortality. If you look at metformin and weight reduction, metformin, although people talk about weight reduction, but first six months there is weight reduction, and next six months you usually gain the weight if you're not on a very high, high doses. But when you compare with SGL2 inhibitors, weight reduction is much more persistent with, uh, with SGL2 inhibitors. HbA1c stability probably both same. Metformin probably has slightly better there. And glucose toxicity, li lipotoxicity, both will have same, same there. And if you have inflammation and the hepatic steatosis, probably uh, metformin also has benefit, but SGL2 inhibitors probably slightly better in terms of uh, 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 steatohepatitis. And if you look at uh, beneficial effects of heart failure, we know that metformin can be used safely in heart failure, but uh, the benefit is much more, even reducing the death of heart failure, hospitalization with SGL2 in inhibitors, therefore there is no argument about that. Cancer risk and long-term mortality, probably safety and everything is with uh, SGL2, uh, with metformin, and long-term safety for last 50 years, metformin has a benefit, and we, do, we, are, we are not going to argue on this matter. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, I, I, I compared the GLP-1 with SGL2 inhibitors with current evidence, and then I compared the metformin with SGL2 inhibitor, metformin with SGL2 inhibitors with current evidence. Therefore, it is up to you to decide 
what's going to be the future of HGL2 inhibitors? Are we going to keep at the level two, or are we going to keep with metformin, HGL2 inhibitors, and GLP-1 one as the level one? I think what we need is the long-term outcome, uh, outcome safety studies for GLP-1 and, uh, and HGL2 inhibitors. Uh, but majority of the, uh, of the people think that in future, probably if there are no long-term safety, uh, safety problems for HGL2 and the GLP-1, probably they will come up in uh, guidelines as the first line. Thank you.